as a result of stealing ourselves. That is, we belong to Krishna, and if somebody steals something from the owner, then he has to suffer. So we've stolen our bodies, our minds, our intelligences, our senses, from Krishna and trying to enjoy separately, thus engaging in what's called sinful activities, that is those activities devoid of Krishna consciousness. Therefore, we have to suffer the reactions of the threefold miseries. By engaging in more material activities to counteract those threefold miseries, miseries of the body, of the mind, other living entities, and material nature, by engaging in more material activities, I can never achieve the solution to the problems which are caused by the same thing. So we've been discussing that the only way to any kind of real happiness of the soul, because the body can't be happy anyway, it's just dead matter. So the real happiness of ourselves who is soul, is self-realization. And myself is part and parcel of Krishna, eternal servant of Krishna. But that's not enough to think that I'm a general servant. In this world, there is so many varieties of identifications that I have resulting in a variety of desires in relation to my self-conceptions. I'm an American, I'm a lady, I'm, the, I'm an artist, um, I'm visiting Houston, all these different material conceptions of myself, which has tons of varieties. I just took an airplane a few days ago, in a few days more I'll be taking another one. This is very interesting for me. It has so much detail and variety. So it's good to know that I'm not this body, I'm not these varieties, and I'm eternal servant of Krishna. But that's not enough to distract me from all the thousands and millions of varieties of my material engagements due to my varieties of material conceptions. Therefore, I need specifics on my identification. Who am I the servant of? And what kind of services do I do? What kind of services do I do in this world? I'm the servant of Krishna's manifestation Sri Guru, and I'm engaging in so many services. But how to make those services be performed in such a way that I can have permanent happiness by doing my devotional activities on this plane? It's necessary to be doing devotional services on the spiritual plane to be absorbed there, even for getting permanent happiness in my devotional activities on this plane. Does that make sense? Just like, suppose I give a class and I'm happy to speak about Krishna and I'm happy if a couple of people tell me what a great class it was. And then if somebody says, well, this part wasn't so great, you could have said this better, then my happiness is not permanent. So in order to have a permanent happiness, not considering, not taking the happiness in the results of my activities, and to really make my activities for the pleasure of Krishna, which is real Krishna consciousness, and not in the name of Krishna consciousness, actually trying to give myself Krishna uh, pleasure. Like for example, I say that I'm cooking for Krishna, 
But because I'm not actually situated in myself, realizing, realizing that as an eternal servant of Krishna, I'm really cooking for myself, and I'm offering it to Krishna so that I don't get a sinful reaction of eating. Because Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, those who eat foods that are first offered in sacrifice, I free them from all sinful reactions and all anartas, all unwanted thoughts and habits. And those who eat foods for sense gratification without offering them to me first, he's verily eating only sin. And again, sin causes suffering. Uh, there's one very great lady named Kunti Devi, who in a, what Prabhupada would call a shortcut nutshell, in two lines, gave the cause and definition of the whole material world. Bhavashman Pleshamanani Avidya Karma Karmani. Everyone is suffering in this material world due to sinful activities. And sinful activities are due to and caused by ignorance of my relationship with Krishna. So, how to do the activities, because I see everybody here is a devotee. There's no, right? Everybody here is a devotee. So, on one hand, we know, we hear that there's no material happiness in the world, and real happiness is in devotional service. So I'm engaging my senses and my talents in the Lord's service under the guidance of Sri Guru. I'm offering my food, I'm singing the songs, engaging my tongue, I'm engaging my words in speaking about Krishna. What else is there? I'm engaging my mind and my ears in hearing and trying to remember. I'm engaging my sense of touch in touching Takuji or in serving devotees. I'm engaging my legs in walking to the temple or walking to do some service. But still, I'm not experiencing permanent happiness. The reason is that I'm performing what's called karma misra bhakti or karma pradhani bhakti. It's bhakti mixed with, or even worse, predominated by karma, or the desire to enjoy the results of my activities. We sent out one lecture on the Hari Kata mailing list some time ago, which, is, which was titled, Offer Yourself, Not Just the Mango. Otherwise, if I myself am not offered, then my offering of the mango must be mixed with personal desire to enjoy. Even in my devotional activities, what I call my devotional activities, on this plane, I'm the center. Srila Gurudev explained that that's the difference between Siddha Bhumi, or the devotional service performed with Rag, with Ragatmika Bhakti, as an associate of the Lord in Goloka Vrindavan. And that's the difference between that service and the service here in this world, which is called Sadam Bhumi, or the world of practice. Here, I'm thinking that I'm the center. I'm dressed in Takuji and I'm thinking, how do I like this? Let's see, I think I'll flip up his 
his chatter a little bit more. Yep, that's a perfect balance for me. Or, I like this garden. It's, I love the colors. But I don't really know, and I'm not really considering as much, how does Krishna like the colors, and how does he like his chatter flipped up in that direction. And I, again, I'm cooking, but how do I like this prasada? Is it delicious enough for my taste? Is it sweet enough? Is it salty enough? Ugh, it's too much salt. Shula Gurudev's Diksha Guru, Shula Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Goswami Maharaj, used to never care if there was any salt on his prasada or not. He never tasted the externals like we taste, but he was just tasting what prasadam really is, and that is Krishna's pastimes. The prasadam is actually Krishna's pastimes. So, if I want permanent happiness, then I also need to be fixed on another platform in order to get my happiness and my devotional engagements on this, this platform. That is tonight, or earlier, before I, just before I came to the temple, I was thinking, and I have this fault, and I have that fault, and I do this wrong thing to other people, and I'm very inconsiderate, and blah, blah, blah. So then, I sing a well, are there any particular songs I can sing, or any particular prayers I can think I can sing? Well, maybe that one will work, and maybe that one will work. And then as soon as I came here and heard uh, Tarun Prabhu singing so beautifully, the, the leading prayers, Vandenam, Sri Guru, Sri Juta, Padakamala, and then the songs, and then other devotees singing the songs. I realized how fortunate I am that I was allowed to come to this temple and participate because every single word of every single song is exactly what I need. Srila Gurudev told me back in the 90s, I mentioned to him that now I'm going to give a class and I'm going to give a class on the budgets. Can you suggest anything? for me to say. So he said, actually, all the bhajans that we have in our song book, our song books, all the acharyas wrote those songs only for one objective, and that objective <coughs> is to become the maidservant of Srimati Radhika, or to serve Radha and Krishna with a leaning towards Srimati Radhika. So, even if the song is, oh, I'm bad in this way, I'm bad in that way, Amara Jivana, Sada Pape Rata, I take pleasure in other people's misery, and I become miserable when other people are happy, I become envious. Envy and pride are my cherished ornaments. Oh Lord, this is my sad, uh, situation, please deliver me. No matter what kind of prayer it is, whether it's that kind of prayer or Kabi Habi Golo Sevi Namar, when will I, um, when will that time come to me when all my offense is ceasing, taste for the holy name increasing, and O oh, Hei Vaishnavataku and O oh, Gurudev. When will I be able to honor all of the entities according to their uh, level of advancement in bhakti? I can never discern, because I'm a Kanista Adhikari, a third class devotee, who doesn't have the qualification to understand the qualification of others. One must be a Majima, Majima, or Majima Uttam Adhikari. That means 
someone who's situated uh, in natural attraction for the Lord's bhajan and the Lord's pastimes and qualities, in order to be able to discern anybody else's advancement in bhakti. How we picked a bona fide guru is only causeless mercy. So, therefore, all these songs that we sing, Gurudev said, also pray, when you're singing any song, pray to the person who wrote the song, be it Srila Bhakti Manoha Thakur, Srila Narakanda Thakur, Srila Gurudev, or Rupa Goswami, or anybody who sang the song, that please make me one at heart with your song that I'm singing right now. Make your heart one with my heart, or make your words, my heart, one with your words. And then they show mercy. So, these bhajans that we sing, the songs that we sing, the mangala charana that we sing before the singing of the songs, and the different books that have prayers for advancement, like Manashiksha, these are all infinitely merciful things that we have an opportunity to connect with. There is one song that we sing, maybe it's on page 81, I'm guessing, of this book, uh, which is Sharanagati. Is that the right page? Or not? Yes. Saranga Sharanagati. In here, there are some lines. Saranga Sharanagati, Hoi Ve Jahar. Tahara Pratana Sune Sri Nanda Kumar. That is Nanda Kumar, Rajendra Nanda Shamasundar, whose praying is our rule of life. He does not hear those prayers offered by one who is not Sharanagat. There are six kinds of, six limbs of Sharanagati. That is, or six. Uh, sentiments of a surrendered devotee. That is, he accepts only those things favorable for his bhakti, for his bhajan. He rejects all things that are unfavorable. Like, for example, if I'm considering watching a karmi TV show, a non devotee TV show, then I would consider, if I'm surrendered, is this going to be good for my bhakti or bad for my bhakti? If I chant my prescribed number of rounds, is this going to be, or if I don't, is this going to be good or bad for my receiving my ultimate happiness? Or will it make me lose the mercy of Guru? So all these things considering, accepting everything favorable for my bhakti, rejecting everything unfavorable, thinking myself most rotten and fallen so that Krishna will have to take care of me, thinking of Krishna as my only maintainer and as my only protector. If I do this, then I get kicked out of the blame game. Well, because of that person, I'm suffering in this way, and because of that person, I'm suffering in that way. And look what you just did to me that really wrecked me up. So when I accept Krishna as my only maintainer and protector, then I look to him for everything. And if something, whatever happens, by my calculation, good or bad, I then begin to see everything as Krishna's mercy and I become happy with whatever happens. So Krishna only accepts the prayers that are offered by his surrendered devotee. So I'm not surrendered, so what to do? So I sing the prayers by my great fortune, the prayers of these surrendered souls, what to speak of surrendered souls, 
all of our acharyas are associates of the Lord, the most intimate associates of the Lord. And they've come from the spiritual world uh, in, in male form in order to set an exemplary life, in order to give us these songs. In the uh, Srila Gurudev's book, The Soul of Book Distribution, which we'll also discuss a bit later, Srila Gurudev says that even one of Srila Bhakti Mnokakura's songs can take us out of the ocean of all miseries and free us from all material desires and anxieties. So how fortunate we are to have this Sangha. And even when we're alone, we're fortunate enough to have the process. One time I told Gurudev, I was actually in my heart, I was really looking for some praise, but I said to him, Oh, Gurudev, not necessarily praise, but that I'm in the right direction. So, and a little touch of praise, too. I said, Gurudev, you know, I'm so busy with all the important services that you've given me in publishing and in preaching that my rounds end up being sloppy. I chant them, but they're very sloppy rounds. So I thought he was going to say, don't worry, you're doing such vital and important services for me, preaching all around the world, distributing and publishing my books all around the world, automatically I'm going to make everything fine with your japa. I'm going to fill in the gaps. But he didn't say that at all. Rather, he pointed towards the different services that he was doing. That is, he was sitting on his bed slash yasasana uh, in his room in Matura on the roof. I think most of you have been there. And on the side of where he was sitting, he had kind of a tilted table, a small table about this big, where he had his um, translation work. So he kind of like gestured to his table showing that he's doing all this publication work, dictating the translations, then his students type it, make some corrections, then he comes back and does more editing. So like his handwriting was on his typed work, and then he's kind of showing me his feedback, which, as you know, there's 16 feeds for 16 rounds on this side, and then there's another four rounds on this side, so 16, 32, 48, and 64. And, you know, he just like held up his bag so that I could see that he already had 48 done and he was on his way to 64, with so many people coming in and out of his room to see him. So he said, no, you must take out time after he pointed on the directions of his services. He said, no, you must take out time to chant, not only that, he said, you must take time to chant and weep, that made it hard. So then I said, well, to, that means I have to go to all the temple programs. I was living in Rupsanat and Bodhiyamat at that time. So he said, temple programs or not temple programs, whether it's with the other devotees or alone, you must take out that time for bhajans and for chanting. Because without bhajans, our chanting, where would we get our moods of what to think about without the bhajans? I once called him up in 1995. I was in, where I was, somewhere in America. And I called him in India. And I told him that I was chanting 32 rounds now. So he said, but you must read Veda Geet and the other books that have the prayers in them for pure service. Otherwise, what will you remember when you chant? So uh, I thought that today, I could quickly, what time is this end? Five minutes? 
which begins, and he would call on devotees, every city, every country, he would call on various devotees to utter the verse, explain the verse, and he would explain it himself. Just, um, I'll go quickly through the first few, and then in the last couple of days, I've been hearing his Manashiksha classes that he gave us back in 1994 in Mathura and Vrindavan. There was only about 10 Western devotees uh, at that time coming to see him. And so he would give us daily classes in Manashiksha in English there. And I was sitting right at his feet. He was sitting on a chair and I was sitting right at his feet. So at some point in his discussion, he looked right down, he was right there, and said in a very soft voice, this is diksha, not that anustanika diksha, or just the um, throwing the grains in the fire and saying swaha, swaha. Not just the ceremony, that is not diksha. Diksha means Ksha means the uh, removal of all obstacles in my realization of my relationship with Krishna, Radha, Guru, Guru Prabhupada, Mahaprabhu and his associates. The removal of all obstacles which are due to sins and offenses and the depart is short for Divya Jnana Dadati, which means the giving of realization of my transcendental relationship with Krishna. Not just theoretical, but realized knowledge. Just like I see so many families here, you realize your relationship with your family members. It's an experiential, realized thing and you associate with them directly, taking the shadow together, talking together. So that level of realization. He said, this is diksha, that is uh, hearing, and then hearing this manashiksha, and then applying it and remembering it. So just the other night, I was rehearing those same lectures on my iPad, iPod, and Gurudev was speaking about the fourth verse, not the fourth verse, the, um, which verse is it? Oh, yeah, third verse. Yadi chera vasha prajabhubi saragam patijano jodandam tachche paricharitamara Swarupam Sri Rupam Saganam Yatasya Rajamapi Sutam Premna Nityam Smarana Matasatam Shumana. That is, oh my dear mind, if you want to reside in Braj, which Braj? That Braj. In Goloka Vrindavan, with Ra, with Ragadmika Bhakti, then, before I say what the men is, I'll say what the Ra is. If you want to reside in Goloka Vrindavan, with Ra, means, what is the meaning of Ra? Gurudev interrupted himself, just telling what he told. Saturation. 
life, you have a tub of dye, red dye, and you have a white cloth, and you put the white cloth in the red dye, pull it out, bring it out, and it's not the color of the red dye, it's lighter. So I do it again, bring it out again, do it again until it matches. That white cloth gets fully saturated with that red dye. So rub means that I have an unquenchable thirst for service and association with the object of love, Sri Krishna. And at the same time, a complete absorption in him to the point of forgetting myself and just being absorbed in him and his happiness. So, oh mind, if you want that level of what? Permanent happiness. Then, every day, call out with great love. Call out for the help of Srila Rupa Goswami, Sri Saru Gamadar Goswami, Srila Rupa Goswami's elder brother, Sri Sanatana Goswami, Srila Narakandas Thakur, Srila Viswanath Chakravarti Thakur, and all the devotees who are recipients of the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And then Gurudev got kind of funny. He said, so you're calling out to Sarup Damodar and Rupa Goswami, come on, come on, save me, save my life. What does it mean, save me, save my life? And then one devotee called out, I'm drowning the ocean of material existence. He said, no, no, no. It means I have no, what is that, I have no uh, gay in my pot. Gay in my pot. So well, he said, what is that gay? The real gay? Like we do RT. But what is it? When I, I can't speak about you. But when I do RT, I do robot RT. This is my robot body, and I do my robot RT. Now I'm going to see how many times should I go around before I pass it to the next person? <laughs> so, and then who was I supposed to turn? Who, was I, who am I supposed to do first? Right. Uh, first, Diksha Guru, then Shikshu will get their permission. And so it's like mental. It's robots. It's mechanical. So the, we do the machines, the mechanical gig, and the mechanical gig wig, and the mechanical gig lab. So the prayer is, I can't say we, I can say I. I see that you all have so much devotion when you're doing the RT. So they say, oh, save me, save my life. How? There's no key in my lamp. What is that key? Praying, Ra, Sneha, Anura. There's no reality. And what is my pot, my lamp? my heart. There's no snake, even though I'm the lowest. As we see from verse 1 of Sri Manashiksha, I'm telling my mind, Oh mind, please give up all pride, all false ego, and develop. So, mind you the lowest right now. We're always agitated for material things. So go from lowest, not to there or there, but go to the top. My mind can't give you that mercy, obviously. My mind is just another material for the green thing. So actually, I'm praying to Sri Ramananda Goswami. I'm praying to Sri Guru. I'm praying to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In the form of instructions to the mind, so, O oh mind, give up all pride and develop incessant, unprecedented attachment for my Gurudev, for the land of Braj. Not only Braj, but all the Lords of Hopes, for Braj, 
for Navadri, for Jagannath Puri, the Lord and his associates there, for the Dham, and also for the associates of the Dham. And all oh mind, please give me unprecedented attachment that is Rati, not even Rati on the level of Bhav, but Rati on the level of Rain, for the Diksha Mantras that were given to me by my Gurudev, and for Harinam, which was given to me by Gurudev, and for Giriraj, and for Jamuna, and also respect all Vaishnavas, even if they're not in the same Sampradaya, the Gaudiya, Brahma, the Gaudiya Sampradaya. And respect the Brahmins too, as long as they worship Krishna, even if they worship demigods as well. And then, number two, O oh mind, don't be absorbed in those rules and regulations that are prescribed by the big literatures. My body's going to do them. My body's going to make the offering. But don't be absorbed in the outer shell of it all, O oh mind. Be absorbed in serving Radha and Krishna 24 hours a day. And what the speaker definitely don't do, O oh mind, those activities that are prohibited in the Vedic literatures. But what should you do? Always meditate on Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And how am I going to do that unless I read Chaitanya Charitamrita? Rai Ramanan Sapa. Srila Gurudev told us once, or on a couple of occasions, that without reading, especially these five chapters of Chaitanya Charitamrita, that is, Adi Lila chapter 4, the reasons why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to this world. Majalila chapter 6, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's evidences that he gives to Sarvabhama Bhattacharya on how Krishna is a person, how God is a person, is not impersonal. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teachings to Srila Rupa Goswami, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teachings to Srila Sanatana Goswami, and uh, that's how many? That's four. And there was one other, but then he made Rathiyatra Prasanga, the subject matter of Rathiyatra as the sixth. Rai Ramanan Sambha, thank you. And reading it with what word? How can I remember it, this so that what? So that I can attain my real emotions in Baba Bhakti. So that my sadhan bhakti or practices will really be sadhan bhakti. In this class about all oh mind, if you want to be in Goloka Vrindavan with Ra, then know what is sadhan bhakti. It's that process which engaging the mind, body, speech, and all the senses in such activities that will give Bhava Bhakti, that is my original spiritual ecstatic emotions of my services, the services of my soul in relation to Radha and Krishna. So, O oh mind, always think, always meditate on Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as not different from the son of Nanda Maharaj, Sri Krishna, and meditate on him as the Supreme Guru. How is he the Supreme Guru? He instructed so many. Of course, Rai Ramananda instructed in a backwards way by inspiring Rai Ramananda to give him answers to his questions. But Ramananda Rai was only his mouthpiece 
he was actually speaking in Ramananda Rai's heart. And his teachings to Rupa, to Sanatan, to Sarabhava Bhattacharya, and to so many others, to Balabhavat, to so many others. And O oh Mind, always oh, remember my wording as the personal assistant and personal associate of Mukunda. Mukunda who wears Kunda flowers. That Mukunda, what is Mukunda mean? One who gives liberation. But which Krishna that gives liberation? That Krishna that wears Kunda flowers and decorates Srimati Radhika's hair with Kunda flowers. Then now we're coming to our third verse. Oh mind, if you want to live in Goloka Vrindavan with Rav, then every day, life after life, day after day, pray to Sarup Damodar Goswami, Rupa Goswami, and how will I know about them unless I'm reading about them and reading their prayers and their words of instructions? Pray to them, come on, come on, save me, save my life. There's no gay in my gila. There's no love and affection in my heart. Then what should I pray for? This is the funny part coming up. I pray to Swarup Damodar Goswami. For what? For my Swarup. I have an intrinsic spiritual form which is by nature being part and part parcel of the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna. My Swarup, my real spiritual body, is also by nature unlimited in bliss, unfathomable in knowledge. And every moment for me is a new experience. I experience the spiritual world as Nitya Navana Bayamana, every moment being newer than the previous one. So I live in astonishment, in constant astonishment. Just like Srimati Radhika, whenever she sees Krishna, although she's been seeing him all day and all night, the next time she sees him, she thinks, who is that most beautiful personality? Is he a sapphire mountain? Is he a magnificent fresh rain cloud? So it's like she's seeing him for the first time. And that's how it is for all of us souls. In the material world, something may start out new, but very quickly it gets old and hackneyed. For example, a newspaper. People were unfortunate enough to read the newspapers and all that terrible news and entangling news and tar baby news. You know what the tar baby is? No. Well, this baby ends up stepping in the tar. You know tar, like liquid tar? And every time he tries to pull himself out of it, he gets more entangled in it. So newspapers and other material things are like that. So first, this is explained by Shri Prabhupada, that first they buy the newspaper and they're holding their newspapers close to their chest with great affection. And three days later, they take that very same newspaper and line their walls with it when they're going to paint the walls because it's of no more value. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu at the Ratha Yatra festival prayed to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, to uh, Lord Jagannath in a very cryptic way. Nobody except a couple of his most intimate devotees could understand what he was praying. The words actually he took from a uh, Sahitya Dharma, which is a 
book of mundane love poetry. And he was singing, I am that same lover, and you are the same beloved. And these are the same uh, moonlit nights in the month of Chaitra. I don't know which month that is. In Huh? April, April, March, April. April, March, April. And we're meeting here again, but my youth was stolen away. And now, in our youth, we met illegally. We weren't married, so we snuck off to meet and we would speak sweet nothings. You know sweet nothings? That is, lovers say silly things to each other that don't make any sense if they love hearing from each other. <laughs> and we would speak these sweet nothings and enjoy each other's pleasure, especially because it was a risk. We weren't allowed to do it. But where are those days, those women nights stole away my youth and now what are we? We're married. Now everybody's thrilled that we're together. We have a free pass to be together but it's not the same. It's boring. And the only time there's some happiness is when after a fight we make up so it's happy for a few moments. So Mahaprabhu was speaking in the mood of a mundane lover, but you can't go back, can you? We can go back and get unmarried again and have the same thrill. It's not possible. So similarly, what he really meant to say, and using the words of the mundane lover, and Shilabhupa Goswami took his words and put it in his own words, knowing his real heart that I am the same Radharani and you are the same Krishna and here we are meeting in Kurukshetra oh I forgot in this mundane poem Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said actually I want again to meet with you underneath the Vedasi tree by the Rainbow River so uh, Shri Gurudev was explaining what is a Vedasi tree. Here we had a, you know, illicit, in the sense that we weren't married, uh, love life together, especially in Indian Vedic culture, it's not permitted, or low in this society, it's considered mostly fine by Westerners. Um, the Vedasi tree is a rubber tree, and uh, if you've ever seen trees after a cyclone, I saw them in Russia once. The tree is completely, like, broken. Split in half, it's broken, it's in little pieces, because that tree was brittle. But a Vedasi tree is a rubber tree. So even if it's in a big cy uh, cyclone, it's going to go like that. And just bend, but never break. So our love was unbreakable at that time. So similarly, uh, in Shilabhupa Goswami's own words, Srimati Radhika is saying that here we're meeting in Kurukshetra and for the first moment I was so happy to see you, but now as I'm looking around, because I was being burnt up by the fire of Cupid, burnt up in your separation. So now I'm seeing you, and at first I was experiencing such happiness, but then when I look around, what do I see? I see elephants, horses, your 16,000 palaces, all your queens, great opulences. I'm not happy here. I want to take you back to Vrindavan, underneath the Kadampa trees, by the Jamuna River where you were playing the flute on the fifth note. Then, really, Radharani was saying, I want you to be happy. I know you're not happy here, but praying is a crooked thing. 
So, why did I tell all that? The newness changes. It starts out new, and then it gets old. But, in the spiritual platform, it starts out unlimitedly new, and in every moment, everything becomes newer and newer. Krishna is reflected. Krishna himself is Nitya Navanabhayamana. His beauty, his qualities, his activities are always fresh and ever increasingly new. And then, in the hearts of the gopis, which are made of Mahabhav, the highest love for Krishna, within the mirror of their hearts, they're seeing Krishna in newer and newer, more beautiful ways, outside the fact that Krishna is already getting more beautiful and more full of qualities. So there's a constant competition between the uh, outside beauty of Krishna and qualities of Krishna always increasing, and the, what Krishna looks like in the mirror of the gopis' love. Not only the gopis, but all the residents. It's just to the topmost limit in the hearts of the gopis. And that's how it is when we join their family. So, we're crying out, O Swarup Damodar, Goswami, please give me my Swarup. This body is full of so many miseries that I'm attached to. And what does it become when I leave it? It either becomes ashes, if I think that I'm a Christian, a Hindu, it becomes stool, if I think that I'm a Parsi, <clears throat> or it becomes dust, if I think that I'm a Christian. <clears throat> Thus thou wilt, thus thou beest. So please give me my real swaroo, my spiritual form, as a servant of Radha and Krishna, the leading towards Srimati Radhika. And O oh, Rupa Goswami, please decorate my room. Please, uh, just like a, uh, a bride is decorated so beautifully at the time of her marriage, <clears throat> Please make me so decorated as a servant of Radha and Krishna. And oh, Srila Sanatana Goswami. Sanatana Goswami in Goloka Vrindavan is Lavanga Mandri. So Lavanga, you know, is a clove. So sometimes the gopis would wear clove earrings. Please give me my, decorate me with clove earrings. In other words, take me out of this illusion that I am the center of the universe, that all things revolve around me, and everybody is for my enjoyment, and everything is my, for my profit, adoration, and distinction. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, at the beginning of the Rathiyatri festival, told his, um, told his followers, that now that's clean, we we'll need your temple to get ready for Lord Jagannath's festival. Lord Jagannath's coming to this temple. He had them first clean the large rocks and pebbles, gross material desires, and then subtle material desires and offenses to Vaishnavas, which was the dust and the tar that we have to work harder at. So praying that now I'm in the midst of my prophet, adoration, distinction, comfort, good foods, even though I'm in the name of a devotee, please give me my actual identity and make me forget so many of our prayers in the song are when will I forget this uh, rose and subtle body and see myself as a resident of Vrindavan, when will I take my birth in Vrishabhanapur? And when will I become married in Yagat, become a maid servant of Srimati Radhika? So, 
for permanent ultimate happiness, which increases at every moment. Srila Gurudev, Srila Prabhupada, our whole group from Pura is so kind enough to give us the meditations, the moods for chanting, Hare Krishna, the prayers of all different kinds of prayers. The prayers of humility, the prayers of asking for good qualities, the prayers just like we said today, O Hey Vaishnava Thakur, O uh, Gurudev, O pure Vaishnavas, Please free me from all my six kinds of faults. What are the six faults? Overeating, overcollecting. Overeating doesn't only mean with the mouth. Atyahara Prayasascha. Atyahara, not only with eating, but um, eating with all the senses. Oh, what a beautiful opposite sex. What a beautiful dress to enjoy. So, overeating, overcollecting. What else? For example, uh, speaking nonsense, gossiping, finding faults in others, criticizing, chastising, even children. Because these children are not actually ours. Manasadeva Deva Jyoki Chumor. These children are the children of Krishna, the children of uh, our Guru Deva. So we offer all respects to the children also. We speak to them in a respectful way. Just as I would want to be respected, the children are just as old as me. They've been through as many births as me. They just died after me, so they look younger. And then I can inspire them more. Or with anybody. Shula Gurde said, don't try to manipulate. Don't try to control. Serve and inspire and everyone who wants to serve Krishna. So, oh mind, if you want to be situated, bow down and pray to them. And they will take away all the things that are obstacles to your body. And then we get our eternal happiness. So, any questions or comments? I have so many questions, but uh, we don't have time for discussing them. Uh, to just uh, to leave the questions out, you know, you don't have to, you know, spend time. I'll try to answer in fast ways. Okay. Well, how, well, we have heard, like you mentioned from Gurudev, that uh, when you pray uh, to the Acharya, the, the Padakarta, who Vaishnava was writing this beautiful bhajan, <coughs> you weep. Now, that is again something we cannot tell. imitate. Right. Yeah. So how do you develop? How do you cry? Both of you Maharaj says that, you know, the way to get mercy is cry. How do you cry? Very excellent question. It's a question of all of us. And fortunately, the songs are the, are the very way. Like in one of the songs, Kaviyabhiro Sevi Namar, when or when, will all my offenses stop and I, my hair starts standing on end and I'm weeping and uh, I have a humble heart. Uh, another one to Gurudev, when will, I, when will my hair stand on end? When will my complexion pallor? When will I become stunned? Then I'll know Gurudev that I have received your mercy. So the, the songs themselves give us the opportunity for asking for that. <coughs> Especially if that's, if I know what my goal is, then I can be on the way there. If I'm singing,